Morning guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new vlog. Stella Rooney is here. I hope you can't see the dry shampoo. I just like doused my head in dry shampoo so I can make this hair last one more day. So hopefully you can't see it. And if you can, pretend you can. Um, but today is a very snowy, cold, just like gloomy day here. And I thought it would be the perfect day to have like the ultimate book vlog i feel like i haven't filmed a book video in so long and that's just because i have been in a huge reading slump the last few months of 2022 but the new year is here we have new goals i'm feeling super inspired and i just really wanted to have like the ultimate book day together so i'm going to share with you guys all the books i read in january we're going to reorganize my bookshelf and i want to unhaul a lot of books uh i'll show you guys how i've been tracking my books my current reads i want to go thrifting for some books and i think that's really it but i just want to have a really cozy day together so grab a coffee grab a glass of wine a mocktail if it's the evening you do you let's spend the day together doing our favorite thing which is anything that has to do with books for me at least personally so i'm really really excited totally inspired by Haley fam who does these like ultimate book videos and i just like love them there's nothing more cozy to me than watching a vlog that includes bookstore shopping, a haul, and then talking about books. Like that just makes my heart so happy. So that's what we're gonna do today. I need a sip of coffee. I feel like I'm finally back into the swing of reading. And if you guys watch the weekly vlog, you would know that I recently got a Kobo and I've been loving it so much. So I wanted to do a quick little kind of like update on my Kobo so far. I've only had it about four or five days now so i wanted to give you guys a quick little review because you guys really were loving the kobo content so in canada you cannot put libby or overdrive on your kindle you can put it on the kindle app which allows you to read on your phone or your tablet but you cannot sync libby with your kindle unless you do the whole like third party vpn thing which kind of freaks me out honestly and i don't know i'm like a rule follower so i don't want to like, do anything i'm not supposed to do so with that being said i talked about this in detail in my weekly vlog so if you guys want to go watch that and get like the full scoop you can but because i read so many books and i read so quick I love buying books specifically thrifting books i'm really over buying new books because honestly they're really expensive in canada and like i said i just read so fast and so many books that i don't know to me it just doesn't seem like the best use of my money if you want to buy new books go for it i'm not stopping anybody i just discovered a love of like thrifting books i feel like it's also kind of like an adventure when you go to the thrift store or like a used bookstore and you're trying to kind of find good books I ended up buying a kobo because kobo is what is synced with libby and overdrive in ottawa at least in canada and let me tell you how obsessed i am with this thing i will not get rid of my kindle i love them for two very different reasons what i will say though is if you're not into kindle unlimited like i am i would probably honestly go with the kobo because of all the great books that you can rent from the library and i was honestly able to rent some really good books right away and i love that they give you the option for 7 14 or 21 day rentals and then you can obviously put holds on and i really love the kobo so far the reason i'm keeping my kindle though is because i have kindle limited and i just love kindle limited which is how a lot of indie authors can get their books out there um i haven't looked too far into it to see if i could get them on kobo's version of kindle limited but i have no desire to really get rid of my kindle um i love them both for different reasons like i said so my kindle kindle limited books and then amazon daily deals um which is basically how i find a lot of like newer books for a good price is because amazon will put a bunch of books on daily deals every day um, and then my kobo is great for renting library books so i'm kind of going back and forth between the two and because of how much i read it's really been worth it a few main points is my kindle is obviously a little bit bigger and i said this in the weekly vlog as well but i like how my kindle is flat whereas the kobo does have a ridge right here which i don't love but that's like really my only con the price point is very similar between them and yeah so that is a quick little review on how i'm liking that so far 
I do also want to do a TBR on my Kindle because I have so many books on here and I need your help deciding which ones I should read first. So I'm going to go through my Kindle TBR with you guys after as well. And then my plan of attack for the day is to get ready. I want to go through my bookshelf and I want to unhaul a lot of books because I've talked about this before, but I think the one thing I learned in 2022 with thrifting is that you don't need to buy everything you see just because it's a good deal. I really want to be a lot more intentional about the books I bring into the house this year, especially with my thrillers. I have a lot of thrillers upstairs that like I probably am not going to read and I just would rather unhaul them so they can go towards a good home. So I want to do a big, not a big, but I want to go through my, my bookcase and be very selective with the books I keep. And then also when we go to the thrift store, just be very selective with the books I bring home. Then probably this afternoon we'll do my January reads. We'll do a little wrap up there and I'll show you guys story graph and like my Kindle TBR and whatnot. But let's chill for a little bit. Let's read, drink some coffee. Just gonna be a really fun chatty long vlog. I'm honestly looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a blast. And yeah, let's spend a day together talking about books. Literally, what is better? We are in my office. I'm honestly really excited to go through and do like a really harsh unhaul and declutter of my bookcase. I think I would rather have a bookcase that has empty shelves than have a bookcase filled with books that I really have no intention on reading. And like I said in the intro, I just, something about me when I started thrifting and I feel like we can all relate to this is I got so excited and I would just like buy everything because it was like a dollar or two dollars and I just kind of got carried away. But I really would like to unhaul some of these books that I just don't have an intention on reading anytime soon and give them to a good home. Because maybe one of the books that is sitting on my shelf that I don't plan on reading anytime soon is high on someone else's TBR. So super excited about that. I also want to go through my nonfiction books because I feel like because one of my goals this year is to read, you know, a nonfiction book every month. I get like really excited and I just scoop up all the nonfiction books. But I feel like nonfiction books kind of take a different mentality to read. Like you really have to be in the mood to read them. And I actually recently discovered short form, which if you guys don't know what short form is, it is going to be the biggest game changer in 2023 if one of your goals is to read more nonfiction books or to just learn. I'm super excited. They're actually sponsoring today's video. And it's so funny because last week we were sitting on the couch and Matt was like, oh my God, I just discovered this really, really cool website. It's called short form. And basically, and I was like, Matt, oh my God, I'm working with them in a video. Like what are the odds? So I just thought that was so funny because Matt was so excited about it. But yeah, I feel like one of the things I struggle with is I want to read all the nonfiction books in the world. I want to educate myself on so many different topics, but I don't necessarily have the time to dedicate to reading all of these books along with just reading my normal everyday fiction books as well. And this is where short form comes in. Short form produces high quality guides to nonfiction books out there, which will give you kind of a comprehensive coverage of the key takeaways and ideas from the book. Do it in a really clear and simple way, which I think is great because a lot of nonfiction books can be a little harder to understand, use big words. And I find personally that when I struggle to read a book and understand because it's difficult to read that's when I kind of give up on the book so having short form is a great resource to get through those harder to read and understand books to so provide commentary and analysis so it kind of just feels like a friend giving you a summary of the book which once again I feel like I'm more likely to take in the information when it's easy to comprehend and kind of feels like a friend just telling you about a book they also cover so many book topics in the nonfiction world so there's truly something for everyone whether you read business books career books finance relationships health self-help like you name it they're they've got you covered no matter what you read i really think it's a great resource especially if one of your goals this year is to read more nonfiction books or to just educate yourself like mine is and they were super kind and they gave me a really great discount code for you guys so you click the link down below you'll get five days of free unlimited access and then after you'll get 20 percent off your annual subscription and when you break down the annual subscription monthly it's actually cheaper than buying a book so basically for less than the cost of buying a book a month you get access to as many book guides as you want so thank you short form for sponsoring today's video and with short form in mind i'm actually going to go through specifically my nonfiction books and see which ones i can give away and just kind of use those short form guides if I ever need a, a refresher on the book because I find I hang on to a lot of nonfiction books that I'm like oh I'm totally gonna read that again and then I don't and I feel like nonfiction books especially are always in high demand and so I'm sure that I could give these to a loving home and then just use short form if I need to brush up on the book so super excited about that partnership I feel like it's just a really really great resource especially for readers and let's take a few minutes and declutter this bookshelf like you know it's going to be intense when you're grabbing a hair clip.
Alrighty guys, I ended up actually unhauling a lot of books. I was just like really strict with myself and there's nothing against any of these books. Most of these I've already read. Um, so most of these thrillers are thrillers that I've read and I typically donate anything under three stars. I'll get through my bookcase after, but yeah, these are just like three stars. Um, you know, I really love to thrift historical fiction and then I just never read it or a lot of these. Um, so that's that. These are just thrillers that I've either started and didn't like or just have no intention on really reading. Um, this I have on my Kindle now. Like, I don't really plan on reading that. Started this and didn't like it. Uh, read it on my Kindle. I don't like hardcover, so I don't know why I bought this in hardcover. Read it, and I'm not going to read it again. And then just like a random running book. So I feel like we did good. Definitely some empty space, which is okay. And I have a whole empty shelf. Now we just have thrillers. So this and this is thrillers I've read and I love. These are the ones I need to read. Empty shelf. And then kids books and Disney Collective and DVDs. These are all of our nonfiction books that we've either read or have to read. These are my kind of more like, I guess, series shelf. So I have all of my Ellen books, all my Twisted books, some Lauren Asher books, and then my T.L. Swan books. Here are the rest of my romance. So all of this is books to read. I have my Magnolia Park series and then just miscellaneous books. And then over here are like just some of my all-time favorites. Actually, here, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this one. And then over here, I have my Sarah J. Mass shelf. So that's where Crescent City goes, but I'm reading it. And then these are all of my, these are all of my like fantasy-ish books. And then this shelf is just like historical fiction slash miscellaneous. And then I have my Nancy Drew collection, which I'm actually gonna take a picture of because I normally see these all the time at the thrift store, but then I forget which numbers I have and I wanna complete my collection. So I am going to take a picture of that and maybe we can thrift some of those today but miscellaneous and yeah. So I'm feeling a lot better, honestly, and excited to work towards reading a bunch of these books. hair up in there because I was like action mode thrifting had to put the claw clip in you know but scored some good finds in there honestly I'm really happy um there were so many more books I could have taken home but like I said I'm trying to be very just what's the word I'm looking for like diligent and intentional with the books that I bring into the house so I'm really happy with my finds but do you guys want to know the funniest part is I forgot the books to donate at home like that was the whole purpose of leaving the house was to bring the books to donate but it's fine um the books in there are always buy four get one free so let me show you guys what i got first one is kind of ironic and funny but it is a um burn bombs disney vacation guide because what i've started doing is i have started to get old disney magazines and anything like that because i want to make a bulletin board collage i just think it'd be something really fun to add to the house and i want to put obviously some of our own pictures in there too but most of these magazines actually have park maps and stuff on them so i thought that would be super super fun to just like cut up and have just some of these photos i'm trying to see there's definitely park maps in here like park maps and stuff so I thought this would be fun to just kind of go through and like cut out some photos and it's an older one it's 2020 so we're good there this one I'm so excited about I'm gonna give it to my mom or my dad for Christmas they both love rock and I thought this would be just like a really fun coffee table book for them to have and they, they don't watch my videos so we're good but it's called this day in rock and it just says day by day record of rock's biggest news stories and I just think it's really cool so I'm gonna give that to one of them for their birthday and then I got three physical books, which I'm so excited about. 
and I can keep pretty good tabs on the books that I've read even though I read so many like I somehow can keep track of them but I also just have a little but I also just have a little running note on my notes app with books that I like want to read or books that I'm looking for divided up into the sections so that's kind of how I keep track of books I'm looking for but I'm so excited. I have been looking for this Sarah Shepard book for a while. I was the biggest Pretty Little Liars fan growing up. I read all of her books. And for some reason, so this came up in my TikTok of like, if you were Pretty Little Liars, girl, you need to read this book. And so here I am. I don't even know if this is YA. I'm assuming it is, but I'm really excited about it. So it's called The Heiress, The Heiresses by Sarah Shepard. I'm like so excited about this. I, I can't wait. I'm so excited about because this has been on my TBR for so long and I haven't been able to find it and it's never gone on sale on Kindle. It's Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore which is apparently supposed to be like a good book if you liked Bridgerton. So really excited about this because I love historical romance. So I was stoked to find that. I feel like a lot of the thrift stores here don't have a ton of good romance finds. It's mostly thrillers, lit fiction, and romance in the sense of like Ellen Hildebrand and like Harlequin romance. Like not like I know my kind of romance so I was really excited to find this and then I swear I'm hitting the literary fiction jackpot lately at Value Village. I picked up The Secret History which has been on my TBR as well because a lot of you guys were saying this was one of your favorite reads of the year so I'm really excited about this so love that and with these kinds of books like obviously I have to be in the mood to read them but for $4.99 I just can't pass it up so really excited about that one but let's head back home I don't really want to have like a whole day of book thrifting just because I honestly just don't need a ton of books so that was enough for me super excited about that little haul and now we're going to anyways but let's let's head back home and find some room on our bookshelf for these books I feel like today has been the progression of my hair going from like down freshly dry shampoo to half up back to down now it's slicked back and i'm ready to shower like she's annoying me but i wanted to end this video off with all of my recent reads for january and yeah i'm super excited i feel like it was a really bad month honestly so i've been keeping track of the books i've been reading on notion i'll link my morning routine down below i kind of did like a full in-depth notion tour but i will put a little pop-up on the screen here of what that page looks like at a glance um, it is from a spreadsheet that I bought on Etsy, so I can't just like link this page for you Unfortunately, just because I did buy it from someone else, but Yeah, let me pull up my story graph to see how many books I read in January you guys I love story graph so much. They actually just did an update as well I talked about this in my last vlog, but um, I do use story graph to read my books I don't have well. I have a good reads, but I don't use it I see a lot of people follow me on there and I, I sadly don't use it. I use story graph and I love it I just think it's superior I read eight books this month. I mean, there is still a few days left in the month, but that's okay. I can just talk about it next month. So, so far this month, I've read eight books. I've read 2,718 pages. I've read 88% fiction and 13% nonfiction. Here is a little graph of the genres that I've read. So it was definitely a big thriller month for me, that's for sure. Um, my average rating was a 3.14. I actually thought it was a lot lower than that, but yeah, so those are my stats for January and let's jump into it. First book I read this month was Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is the first book in the, I believe it's a series. Yeah, the Skyland series. I gave this three stars. It was a cute second chance romance, but in my opinion, it was nothing really revolutionary, honestly. I really was hoping to love this book, but it honestly just missed the mark. I loved the premise of it. Don't get me wrong. I loved that it was like a second chance romance between two parents that have kids and like they own a restaurant together. I think it moved really quick. The dialogue was pretty good and it kind of kept me going going um like I never really put it down this book did have great mental health representation I found myself tabbing a few spots that I really enjoyed the quotes about therapy and like life lessons yeah I don't know this book was marketed as a second chance romance and I really think it's more of women's fiction it just was there's not much romance in it honestly I personally am not a fan of the whole one hotel room trope so I just didn't love that aspect of the book but like to each their own but yeah, I will say that I think that Kennedy Ryan's writing is really beautiful. It just like wasn't anything revolutionary. Like it wasn't like a jaw-dropping romance in my opinion. 
Next was The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I got this on an Amazon Daily Deal and I really liked this book. Um, it was cute. It's very fluffy. There's not really any spice in it. I would put it in between YA romance and adult romance. Basically, Hannah is like this protection agent, undercover agent, who's assigned to this pop star named Jack Stapleton who like went off the grid. And basically his mom is sick, so he goes home to Texas and she goes with him as his bodyguard, but he doesn't want his family to know he has a bodyguard. So she obviously acts as his girlfriend. I know it was very rom com -y, very cheesy, very light and fluffy, which I'm just realizing is like not really for me, honestly. I really like the angst. I really like the, you know, the spice. And, but if you enjoy fake dating, definitely have this to your TBR. Like it was good. It just, once again, wasn't anything revolutionary. One of three physical thrillers I read. Then we have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, which I gave this four stars. This is a really hit or miss book for a lot of people, and I know why. Basically, I'm reading the synopsis on Goodreads because I honestly don't even know how to explain it. Basically, this is about Casey. She's a widowed actress that, like, lives on her family's lake house in Vermont. And then this, like, famous couple moves in across the lake, and they have, like, an all-glass house, so she, like, spies on him. And then basically she like obviously gets to know these people and realizes that their marriage like, you know, isn't working. And it just says, packed with sharp characters, a psychological suspense, and a gasp-worthy plot twist. This is the ultimate escapist read. I will say I love Riley Sager's writing. Like I could not put this book down. I think I read it in like one evening. It was really, really good. I wouldn't really call this a spoiler, but it might be a spoiler. So skip ahead 10 seconds. There is a supernatural element to it, which I wasn't sure if I loved or hated, honestly. And I really did not see the plot twist coming, to be quite honest. To me, is a good thriller, but I always say this, that thrillers are subjective because what I see coming, someone else might not, and vice versa. But I really loved the element to it. I just wouldn't give it five stars, but it was still really, really good. The new Mary, I never know how to say her name, Kubica, Kubica book, Just the Nicest Couple. I'm giving this two stars to be nice, but it's probably like a one star. I'm shocked I finished it. Well, I'm not shocked I finished it, but... Basically, this is like one of your usual bland thrillers, you know, it's about two couples, a missing husband, they're trying to cover up his disappearance, blah, blah, blah. Nina's married to Jake, Jake goes missing. Then there's Christian, Lily, Lily and Nina are co-workers. Are you still following? Your usual suburban domestic thriller, like nothing interesting. This was set up to be a really great thriller, but the characters fell flat and the execution was awful, which is shocking for someone like mary which yeah we're on a first name basis now um who has written so many thrillers this was like one of those books that i couldn't put down and i was like flying through but only because i was just expecting some kind of crazy plot twist and it just never came so that's the only reason but i will say her writing like i like it it's quick and easy to read there's not really a lot of fluff in it but yeah not worth not worth read in my opinion like it was like every other thriller out there about a missing husband which is a shocker because local woman missing is one of my favorite thrillers of all time then i read the idea of you by robin lee which once again i think this is a very hit or miss book i gave this two stars this is about i don't know how to say her name Soline. not really a fan of but it's fine um she's a mom and basically she takes her daughter to this august moon concert which is like comparable to one direction you know like little boy band and she goes backstage and basically this 20 year old that's in the band is like yo you're a milf like you're kind of hot and she's like okay cool and then they go for like lunch one day and they just start fucking anyways you can imagine what a woman does in this situation a 40 year old woman starts banging this 20 year old in a boy band i feel like you love or hate this book i didn't like necessarily hate it but i hated the ending like i don't know there's just something about rooting for a couple to find a way to be together when all the odds are against them and I really hated the ending. I'm really praying they turn this into a duet. And also there's a movie coming out with Anne Hathaway. So like I will be watching it because I loved the idea. But the ending was trash. And yeah, it made me want to throw my Kindle against the wall. So that's all I have to say. But I do think that the actual book itself was pretty decent. Then we have The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth. This is like, once again, two stars to be nice. Basically, this is about Fern. Fern is a twin sister to Rose. And Fern we they never which i don't like when books do this they like beat around the fact that like they give a, a character all the characteristics of being on the spectrum but then they don't actually say that they're autistic or on the spectrum they basically just say that she's like weird and like all these things which like why like why are we like why don't you just come out and say it like it's okay like anyways like listen to this fern avoids crowds bright lights and loud noises she has a carefully structured life and disrupting her routine is dangerous like why can't we just say Fern is on the spectrum or Fern is autistic or Fern like wh why 
Anyways, it says when Rose discovers she can't get pregnant, Fern sees her chance to pay her sister back for everything Rose has done for her. Dark secrets, riveting, shocking story of unexpected love, blah, blah, blah. Everyone has a dark side. Okay, the reviews on this were amazing. So like, I was so excited to read this. I was expecting a super twisty thriller. First of all, this is not even a thriller. Once again, women's fiction. Like there's no thriller element to this book at all. And to be honest, it is so obvious what's going on from like literally the first page literally like that is the thriller element it's so obvious um it was fast paced and easy to read and because of that i couldn't put it down but once again like you know the mary kubica book i was just waiting for a plot twist like i was reading so quick because i wanted a plot twist and there was none but yeah it was really just like a family woman's drama about like sisters weird relationships and it's been compared to like eleanor oliphant and Rosie project so do with that what you will but I personally don't think it's worth a read at all and I read the housemaid which was amazing I gave this 4.25 stars this is on Kindle Unlimited the only reason it's not five stars for me is because it's very similar to turn of the key by Ruth Ware and like another book um if you liked Verity you would really like this book okay so basically this is about a girl who becomes a rich family's maid um Nina and Andrew are the couple and Nina is like you know in the book looks to be a little cuckoo anyways i really enjoyed the book once again could not put it down the reason it's not a five star is because it was just very similar to like every other thriller that's like a live and nanny couple situation like it's i don't know it was just like pretty obvious but it was a really really good read i really want to read some of her other books so if you have any recommendations for freedom mcfadden books i should read let me know i'm very excited the sequel actually comes out in february to the housemaid so i'm really excited to read that it wasn't very unique or original then the last book I read was Taste by Stanley Tucci, which chef's kiss. I love that man. I don't rate memoirs, but if I could, this would be a million stars. It was amazing. I regret reading it on my Kobo because he actually puts recipes in it, which I totally would save and use. So for that reason, I'm sad, but it's basically about his life growing up and how food played such an important role. And then he puts his family recipes in throughout the book, which is so fun and awesome. So if I can find it, I will totally thrift it. But those are all the books I read this month and that is the book vlog for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!